no, garbage, no, shit, total shit, maybe, no, 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 jackpot! There is a house in New Orleans. Slam! Da 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 da! I found the song! Oh! Yankee Doodle Boy! Great choice! It's either this or Paradise by the Dashboard Lights, but Yankee Doodle Boy, underrated song, right? It's a close call between those two. I can see your dilemma, but I think you're making the right choice. Grudy's doing a pretty good job, huh? She sewed Grudy's new blue jeans. Definitely. And interesting fact. Did you know House of the Rising Sun is in public domain? So anyone making a video can use it, as long as it's their own version. Just the thing that is interesting to know. Oh, really? I did not know that. Thank you for that interesting fact. And thank you for setting up this karaoke birthday for me, by the way. You did order me to do it under the threat of torture, but sure, you're welcome. Anyway, it was easy once I upgraded Rusty by adding Mario Paint to his programming. Pretty cool, man. <laughs> Damn, someone is in a good mood, huh? Hey, it's my birthday! Oh, I'm in a good mood! Hey, you're doing a great job as our karaoke machine tonight, Rusty! In the words of the many prehistoric animals similarly forced into indentured servitude as common household devices on the Flintstones, I am willing to endure this humiliation in return for my continued residence in your mansion. One foot on the platform. Ugh. The other foot... Dude, you On might be in a good mood, train. but damn, Orca's strangely pissy tonight. Oh, I know, right? I asked him for another bucket of paint, and he was like, why don't you go peel some off the walls? I mean, I tried it, and it was good, but still, it was so unlike him. He's usually so flipping nice. If he hadn't built up so much goodwill through the years, I would have just ripped his arm off right there. <laughs> don't doubt it. I've done it many times. Too many people oh, I've seen. Thank God. Grudy knows. Grudy's one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice work up there, Grude. Nice job. Yeah. Yeah. Whoopity fucking do. Did Grudy perform up to your expectations, Master? Grudy, everyone. You're the newest addition here at the mansion, and you certainly did sing the song in its entirety. You clean one hell of a toilet, too. Rudy is taken aback by Orca's behavior. Don't worry about him, Grudy. You did great. Shut up, Squid Ghost! Don't worry about him, Grudy. You did great. I seriously don't get it. Orca's usually so nice, always encouraging, no matter what. A male stripper? You can pull it off. You have what they call a walker's body. And a lot of girls go for that. No, I do not think it's too soon to dress as Bill Cosby for a potty. People will find it hilarious. <coughs> yeah, I say go for it. Next up, we got Squid Ghost. Float your dumb ass up here and sing your tuna breath fish fucker. You fuck a couple dozen fish and you're labeled for life. Squid Ghost, you're up. <laughs> you put their head up there, dude. He is in a mood. Boo! Get off the stage! We hate you! Boo! Boo! Every time. Well, it was short. You all could learn a thing or two from Squid Ghost. All right, Peggy Pill Bottle, you hackneyed piece of shit. Come sing some bullshit. We gotta do something about this. I can't stand to see anyone in this bad a mood on my birthday. Other than Squid Ghost. <coughs> Idea. <coughs> Duet my song with me. We can make a huge production out of it to cheer him up. Oh, I love this idea. I love it. I'll make costumes. Oh, and we can do choreography and just go completely bananas, bonkers over the top. Oh, I've got fireworks. Perfect. Hey guys, we'll be back real soon. Have fun for a bit without us. Can Grudy serve you in any way, Mr. The Grumble? Oh, 
trying to... Rudy is having a hard time understanding you, Mr. The Grumble. Could you please speak more clearly? And when I finished singing, everyone stood and cheered. And they were screaming, Square Ghost, Square Ghost. And they wanted an encore, but I ended it there because it's always best to leave them wanting more, you know? And Oh, uh, I forgot. I've got, um, uh, a colonoscopy. Yeah. For my butt. I gotta go. Definitely. And if you're up for it, I was thinking about making us some cool patriotic hats. I say the bigger the better. What should I be working on? Like capes or something? <laughs> oh, absolutely nothing. I don't trust your costuming abilities anymore. Hey, it's hard to sew when you're puking your guts out and you cooked the clams that night. You completely tanked our production of Geography of a Horse Dreamer. Oh, no, it wasn't your portrayal of Cody at all. I shine! Stop! <sighs> Let's not drudge this up again. Last April was the worst month of my life. Okay, agreed. But you're still not touching these costumes. All right, well, what can I do then? Because on our way from the coop through the foyer to here in the living room, over the course of that distance, we completely choreographed the entire performance. We are highly efficient choreographers. Tell you what, you saw Coco the other day, right? Yeah. Well, do for me one of those reviews you're so fond of doing while I'm working on finishing these. I'm not so fond of them. You guys keep making me do them for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. An overly opinionated, highly critical ass like you clearly has, hasn't been enjoying them at all. You're right. I love it. So, to set the stage regarding my actual experience viewing Coco, it should be noted that there was an animated short before the movie. It's something I look forward to every time I see a Pixar movie, especially since theirs tend to be kind of artsy and strange. So, imagine my dismay when the lead into Coco was an endless, uninspired Frozen short focused on Elsa, Anna, and Olaf figuring out what their Christmas tradition should be. Everyone else has traditions. What's ours? And, by the way, I like Frozen. I'm not a hater. I know that might seem strange because I'm super fucking masculine. Like, I play fantasy football, and I saw Bush in concert once, so I'm pretty fucking tough. And, quickly, off topic, if you ever see someone wearing a Bush t-shirt, don't ask them if it's because they love George Bush. One of two things is going on in this situation. Either you're an astronomical idiot who thinks that people who supported George Bush bought shirts that just simply said Bush on them, or you're exceedingly unfunny and making a terrible joke for what is probably the hundredth time to that person wearing that shirt. Let me give everyone some advice on being funny. If you think of a joke and it takes about a third of a second to come up with, then it's already been said. A lot. So don't say it. Sit back and try to think of a more clever joke. And if you can't, then don't say anything. Not everyone gets to be funny, and that's fine. I have plenty of unfunny friends, and I only love them marginally less than all the others. Anyway, back on topic. The point is that going against the super macho stereotype that I embody, I really like Frozen. And that being said, this Frozen short sucks farts. And it put me in a horrible headspace at the start of Coco. I found early on I was griping to myself about stupid shit. Like, for instance, this is a movie about a Mexican boy named Miguel who's growing up in a family that forbids listening to or playing music. No music! Because Miguel's great-great-grandfather left his wife and child to pursue a career in music decades ago. And for this reason, that woman forbade the next four generations of family members from listening to or participating in any form of music. And for the first quarter of the movie, I was completely fixated on this character's asinine and frankly ludicrous motivations. I kept wondering what this psychotic woman would have done if her husband had abandoned the family to become a chef. Would she have just starved everyone declaring that food was forbidden? And why would every member of the family go along with this ridiculous rule for four generations? Mexico has some really dope music. And you're telling me not a single person was ever like, uh, maybe this rule is silly and we shouldn't be obeying it, like, just dogmatically until Miguel came along? I'm not buying it. But, slowly, regardless of all these totally legitimate questions, not nitpicky nonsense at all, 
the movie began winning me over and I started to find myself immersed in it. Coco revealed itself to be a bright, beautiful, and well-acted movie. It built this fantastic world filled with vivid colors, spectacular sets, Mexican Pokemon, and really cool skeleton characters whose designs were inspired by the traditional Day of the Dead aesthetic. And from my experience, I have to say it's fucking hard to design a skeleton character who stands out as unique. And this movie did it hundreds of times successfully. And that's fucking awesome. Hey, since when have you ever designed a cartoon character? Uh, anyway. The movie takes place during the Day of the Dead Festival, where people take the time to remember their family members who have passed and tell stories about them. Well, during this particular festival, through a crazy set of circumstances, Miguel finds himself in the land of the dead, interacting with family members who have long since passed away. And, in the world of Coco, if no one in the living world remembers a person who has passed, then they disappear from existence entirely. For me, this land of the dead was the highlight of the movie because it felt like a fully realized location. So much so that I couldn't help but wonder something. Mexico is, to the best of my knowledge, the only country that celebrates this holiday. And you should know that I spent four days in Mexico in a hotel once. So I consider myself an expert. So much so that there's no point in bothering to Google any more information about this holiday and confirm my suspicions. Anyway, my point is... What if the mythology behind this holiday is legitimate? That our family members continue to exist in the afterlife until we forget about them, and then they disappear forever. Does that mean that every other country on Earth, because they don't take the time to participate in these traditions, basically has almost nobody inhabiting their land of the dead cities other than, like, dead famous people? Is L.A.'s land of the dead city just populated with Carrie Fisher and Phil Hartman and Alan Thicke running around making movies in the afterlife? Oh, also, what if a family in Kansas gets completely wiped out in like a tornado, just splat? Do they appear in the land of the dead only to disappear like two seconds later forever? Like, oh, wow, what a cool city. Wait, where am I going? And then they're just gone? Or... What if no one remembers you except an old family pet? Do you keep existing then? I bet you would, especially if you're one of those people whose cats started eating their corpse after slipping and cracking your head in the shower. Because it's hard to forget a good meal. Ian, stay on topic! Right. So, besides those obvious plot holes that probably were similarly bugging everyone else in the audience, the story of Coco was great. It was tightly constructed, didn't meander, everyone in it had a purpose, and it was concise but unique and clever. I really liked it. It eventually pushed me past my anger over the frozen shore and completely engaged me, and by the end, I was crying fat, happy tears. Of course, take that with a grain of salt, because it should be noted that I don't always cry at the most normal of things. Like <laughs> This is the exact moment during the final Harry Potter movie that I started to cry. Not when... Harry was turning over the stone and his dead loved ones came back to support him or when Ron and Hermione finally kissed or any other reasonable moments that, you know, fully functioning human beings actually would find sad. No, it was this giant smashing a bunch of wizards with a mace. This set off the realization in my head that I was never going to experience anything new ever again from this wizarding world that I love so deeply and that it was all coming to a close. And, of course, this was the image that made me realize I was completely wrong, and that this franchise is never going to die, and I'm slowly growing to hate it. Hey, didn't you also spill beer on your pants once from crying too hard during Toy Story 3, and it looked like you peed yourself at the Somerville Theater? That may or may not be accurate. To sum up, this movie was great. Go see it. If you have kids, take them to it. It's smart and beautiful, and as far as kids' movies go... It's the kind that when your kid inevitably plays this one on an endless loop, it won't make you want to smash your TV with a hammer. And it's definitely better than Holiday in Handcuffs. Ha <laughs> ha! You should change your rating system from is it better or worse than Holiday in Handcuffs to is it good enough to make me forget about how bad the Frozen short was? Fuck no. I like my rating system. <laughs> He's still singing? Who knew there was a 7 minute and 35 second long version of Danny Boy?
Grudy would really like to serve you, Mr. The Grumble, but Grudy is still having trouble understanding you. He says he wants to sing Ba with a Ba. In a bit, Ian and I are up next. Hey, this uh, this next one's going to be a duet, Orca. Oh, great. Two dudes on stage singing a song. Unlistenable. I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy, a Yankee Doodle Do or Die, a real life nephew of my Uncle Sam's, born on the 4th of July. I've got a Yankee Doodle sweetheart, she's my Yankee Doodle Joy. The Yankee Doodle came to town riding on his pony. I am that Yankee Doodle stuck a feather in his hat and called it macaroni. Yeah. Did a very good job. So is anybody else gonna sing, or are we done here? Well, that's shit. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Fess up, Orca. You've been in a shit mood all night. It's so not like you. You're usually so encouraging towards us. You're everyone's cheerleader in the mansion. What is going on? I concur that your dour demeanor has put a damper on an otherwise adequately enjoyable evening. Please confide within us your frustrations, Orca. All right. The thing is, I really do love supporting you guys, and that is why I'm pissed off. I only have one hand, so I can't clap for you guys, and you're all just doing such great jobs. Aces. Every one of you. You all deserve a round of Jaeger on the house for those performances. Yeah, except Squid Ghost. It's just when I can't properly clap for you guys, it makes me moody. Because I believe in you all so much. Oh, oh my god, I'm touched. I'm touched. Feel my heart. It's beating. I, too, have yearned for the ability to clap each time one of you has performed your trite versions of popular songs. And each time, the singular hand I have been supposedly gifted has served as nothing more than a frustrating reminder of my never-ending inadequacies. See? This guy gets it. Alas, a kindred spirit in pain. Deaf. Bros for life. Well, it looks to me like we found a pretty simple solution to our problem. Agreed! Uh, ah! Ah! Oh, yeah! Ha! God! Hey, that's pretty neat. Who Ow. wants some Jaeger? Peg, Drew, I'm on it. Rusty, my oh, song. Hit it out, man. Hit it. Oh, my God. Hey, oh my God. dude. Oh, my God, this hurts. Oh, my God. It's a little Oh, wild. my God. Little I hate living oh, in a mansion with monsters. monsters. They do stuff like, why do you stop ah. your cigar? It's me, Melody, from Hey Dude. Just letting you know, uh, you should follow Ian on Twitter and leave a comment and all that other shit. Or, or don't if you don't want to. Who cares? Life is bullshit. <laughs>